What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're talking about a few different topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Final Destination 6 and potential spoilers about who could be dying in the upcoming film to major potential deaths. So if you don't want to know anything about that, you probably shouldn't be looking at the video. We're also going to touch on Beetlejuice 2, Euphoria Season 3, and a couple other things. Just to start off with Final Destination 6, we know that from an audition tape that is out there, a couple of audition tapes that are out there for the upcoming film that is currently titled Final Destination 6 Bloodlines, that we will be following a woman named Stephanie that was part of the official plot thread that came out from production weekly but we also learned that the grandmother that was cited in this synopsis is named Esther again that could be a placeholder name this is coming from the audition tape Esther we know is the grandmother of Stephanie and back in the 60s she saved hundreds of people from dying in a tower collapse at a place called Skyview one by one death eventually killed the survivors connected to Skyview and their families that should have never existed before death all ultimately caught up with Esther and killed her according to Stephanie and this scene from the audition tape. Now Stephanie seems to be having premonitions about the events from the 60s because the last person who died in this tower collapse according to her was Esther which explains why Esther died last since it's the order she would have died anyway. Stephanie seems to also have a brother named Charlie who she possibly will die trying to protect according to an additional audition tape for the character of Charlie. Stephanie chose, tells Charlie to go live his life and that she'll do this to protect him the way Esther protected them. But what is it that she's doing? Safest assumption would be that she's sacrificing herself so that Charlie can go on to live his life and death can leave him alone. My question though is, what is the context of this sacrifice? If that's what it is, what about this would stop death from coming after Charlie? Or is there something about Charlie that would make him just some something somebody that death doesn't care about? Is there something about his actual bloodline that makes him irrelevant to the actual plan that death has for its design? But time will tell. So two major deaths that could happen in Final Destination 6 are related to our main character, Stephanie, who, according to this audition tape, potentially will sacrifice herself to save her brother. And then the grandmother who had a premonition and saved hundreds of other people decades ago in the 60s. Uh, Esther, that being so. Stephanie and Esther, two potential huge deaths. Jumping into Beetlejuice 2, Beetlejuice 2 began filming yesterday and Willem Dafoe is reportedly in it, according to Giant Freaking Robot and a now confirmed listing from Production Weekly for anyone who wants to say that Giant Freaking robot isn't reliable i get it now he is reportedly playing a post-death cop so i would assume he might be tracking beetlejuice for some sort of afterlife crime that beetlejuice has committed but we'll see the announcement of willem dafoe was completely unexpected but i'm intrigued to see this collaboration between him and tim burton because i think it's their first time working together now we know the film will indeed arrive next september Catherine o'hara is actually officially attached to return as well for anyone who had doubts about that but let's hope that gina davis has a small cameo potentially because there's been no mention of Gina Davis I'm not expecting Alec Baldwin back for obvious reasons jumping into David Gordon Green's The Exorcist Believer which had a test screening a few days ago and it looks like no one in attendance believes in this movie being good because according to viewer non reactions they've heard to The Exorcist Believer that occurred in New York are not great common complaints are that it's too long and not scary everyone seems to agree it has one excellent jump scare though now it's important to remember that Green's Halloween Kills had positive test screenings and then was mostly panned when it had its world premiere in Venice that same year, I believe. And Halloween Ends didn't really help make people confident in this team tackling the Exorcist series. Scott Teams is part of the creative team for the upcoming film, and his Firestarter film, which he wrote solely on his own, I believe, was poorly received as well. His Halloween contributions were mostly panned, and apparently Insidious 5, which he also wrote, might be bad as well, according to viewer Renan. All of this stuff is subjective, of course, but the Exorcist story that we have in this movie is, according to you're not very contained and resolved so if the film doesn't warrant a sequel at least we have nothing to worry about as far as cliffhanger goes i would assume uh it's just very unfortunate that the film might not be as good but again it's all subjective the film seems to mostly have pacing problems if you're complaining about it being too long but again that's all subjective the film could end up receiving negative test screening reactions end up being one of the best well-received horror films when it arrives in theaters later this year in october linda blair also apparently only makes a brief appearance in the movie for anyone wondering about linda blair so euphoria season three will film in la new york and singapore officially according to production weekly so we'll have characters in different places i would assume the show is reportedly going to take a five-year jump from where we left off in season two but we'll see if that's a pro or a con for the upcoming season i just want better writing and more resolutions before we start new plot threads for rue and her band of friends i just really do not feel like 
having things re regarding Fezco and Cassie and Maddie and everything as far as what's been going on in season two and season one just completely dropped for us to jump into a new five year later story and say, hey, you know what? Forget all about all that stuff. It's like, no, that's that's just bad writing. But we'll see if they even offer us any resolutions to a lot of the things that were poorly written with season two. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is Freaky Friday 2. Freaky Friday 2 is officially in development according to the New York Times. They reported yesterday that Disney apparently confirmed that Freaky Friday 2 was in early development, which was a big thing to learn. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan are expected to reprise their roles as Anna and Tess Coleman. The screenplay will reportedly be written by Elise Hollander. And again, this is coming from the New York Times. Now, here's the other bit of interesting news that came out. One of the stars who starred as uh, a member of Pink Slip, uh, Christina Vidal, wants to return as Maddie for Freaky Friday, too. Uh, she put this up on her Instagram story. If it's still up there, you might not be able to see it. I don't remember how much time had passed, but it should still be up there. She put up asking, oh, my gosh, can I please be in it? So clearly she wants to be a part of this sequel. As far as the sequel and my thoughts on it, I think it's amazing. I think the fact that we are getting a Freaky Friday 2 is amazing. I will say this. If you think it's unnecessary, I agree. It's not necessarily something that we need, but the fact that it's happening, it's like, OK, I wanted this. So let's see how it ends up. If it ends up being poor, then so be it. But I at least was wanting to see a Freaky Friday too, but I can't deny that I also see where you're coming from when you say it's not needed, it's not necessary, because no, it's not necessary, but it's something I desperately wanted, and now me and many of you are gonna get it. Because Jamie Lee Curtis has been teasing the project for some time, and the more she kept teasing it and knowing who Jamie Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis is and how she was already stating she's been talking to Disney, it's like, okay, she has pull, she's gonna make this happen, now we know it's in early development, and now we know about somebody who's writing the screenplay, so it's like, okay i'll give it a chance and see what they cook up for this movie that many people say is long overdue but again it's not needed you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications you can never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video